All right. All right. Well, welcome in, everyone. Welcome into Sunday morning live with Tanae and Stephen. I want to first of all thank Tanae for thank you, Tanae, for doing the message last week. I appreciate the message. Listening to it while I was driving back from Atlanta, getting some of my CEUs in. So um, I didn't want to do it from the car, especially the way I looked. So thank you, Tanae. You look much, much better than me. In fact, we should shut my video off and just leave yours on while I talk. All right, let's just take a deep breath. Close our outer eyes if it's safe for you to do so. And just acknowledge the holy sacred presence of God that is in every breath that is right where we are. In fact, there's no place we can go where it is not. And we acknowledge the holy sacred presence that God is as love, as wisdom, as law, with thanksgiving. And that is our prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving for the presence of God, always there and always available to us. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right. Today, some of you I know out there listen to uh, my podcast, and I, I started the last couple podcasts off looking at a little piece I found in this book. When I go through books, I, I you know, I, I study them. I, I take a couple pages and I go deep. But this, even after I did some like generic podcast, because my podcast, The Genesis Frequency, goes out to, to people that are working on personal and professional development and working on self-improvement, and, and it's for individuals and small businesses and corporations. Now, I integrate spirituality a little bit in that, kind of sprinkle it, you know, with the condiments of spirituality. But it's been hanging with me, this one little piece that I pulled out of here. And as I was thinking about today, I didn't really prepare. I didn't write out a whole talk. I love to do these things, and I'm able to do them in more of a relaxed way with our group here. And knowing that, hey, it is what it is. And I let spirit move in and drop in. So what I'm getting at is I'm going to actually read this piece today that I'm talking about. And and then I'm going to share with you some scripture pieces that I say I, I really believe say the same thing, speak to us. And so this is a message that's been been with us for thousands of years and probably even predates our master teacher in way shower Jesus the Christ. So so let's look at this because I think a lot of us get stuck. We want to live a good life. We want to live a joy-filled life. We want to live a fulfilled life. We want to feel satisfied. We want to satisfy that longing and discontent perhaps that we have for something more. And I'm not talking today just about material things. That's all fine and good, you know, to want the, the new house or the property or the, you know, the new car or, or all that. But I'm talking about some of the intangible aspects and character of spirit in our lives as well. When I share today's message, we want to embrace the Christ, the Christ consciousness, the ideal. This little piece that I got to is in a chapter that Wayne has here. And he's talking about different suggestions that he's offering us to release old beliefs. And that's really where we, so many of us get stuck. And some of you that have gone deeper into this material with myself and Tanae, we talk a lot about releasing those old beliefs because they really get a stranglehold on us. A lot of times it's very difficult to get get past them. And in these suggestions about releasing old belief, this is actually uh, number three. He's talking about these myths that we get attached to. We get attached to the myth. And this is belief number three. The belief is idealism, right? The perfect, the ideal life situation, thought, experience. Idealism can't coexist with realism and and that's a belief so many of us hold it's like we we have this switch okay this is real and i'm going through this this is real get away from me with the airy fairy ideal idealistic energy that you're coming from so so hold that in mind as i go through this and it'll make more sense as i share today because i'm gonna i don't usually like to read this is a few paragraphs long, but I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. 
he says, and he, he's doing a quote tongue in cheek here. He's saying, don't be such a dreamer, be realistic. Forget about your inner vision. Look around you at what's happening. That is what is real. Have you heard similar pronouncements often in your life? If so, you probably developed an attitude about what is possible and what was impossible. If the ideals that attracted you were labeled impossible, you probably sacrificed them for a way of viewing your world that was based on what others determined as realistic. Discarding that old belief about reality can be a major task on the path of the sacred quest. Are you ready to reconsider your view of reality? Perhaps William Blake's statement will inspire you. William Blake said, if the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear as it is, infinite. Can you imagine your reality in that way? Everything infinite? When your perception is expanded, nothing is real and nothing is imagined. All there is, is perception. When you cultivate this awareness, your reality is no longer defined by your physical world. At the tiniest quantum level, time is not a reality. Particles can be in more than one place at the same time, and they appear and disappear according to how we observe them and what measuring devices we use. All of this constitutes a new reality. Always remember, we are made of the same energy. Given this perspective, it is very important to hang on to your dreams and ideals. Given this perspective, it is very important to hang on to your dreams and your ideals. Quietly but determinedly, know that anything that you can conceive, you can manifest in the material world of physical reality. If you want a richer experience of your life, abandon the idea that your reality is only what your senses report. Your inner world and all the energy of your higher awareness create a reality different from that which you have been taught. In this reality, your higher spirit, the loving presence within you, is dominant and very real. In this world, you rely on something quite different than ordinary reality. Choosing the way of the sacred quest means you will learn to rely on this new reality. Shift back to being the idealist who had inner inklings about the world of spirit. That idealist within you will happily do the following according to Buddha. Buddha says, just a couple more lines here, rely on the message of the teacher, not on his personality. Rely on the meaning, not just the words. Rely on the real meaning, not on the provisional one. Rely on your wisdom mind, not on your ordinary judgmental mind. And then he goes into some suggestions for how do we do this? How do we release realism and welcome idealism? And, and maybe we'll do a little bit more of that next week. But I wanted to talk about that. How, how often do we do that? How often? Are we just giving our power away? We talk about omnipresence, right? God, spirit that we're made of is omnipresent. There is no place we can go where God is not in the energy that is spirit. We talk about omniscience, um, all-knowing. We talk about omnipotence, all power. But so often we are told, or, or that will come back up, what we were given when perhaps we were younger, maybe we still hear it all the time. Get real. Get real. Oh, you're not living in the real world. It's not like that. And all that is giving our energy to what's outside and around us. This is what I always talk about, about learning to make that shift from living from the inside out rather than from the outside in. 
Because when we do that, we are judging and we are living our lives according to appearances and we're giving away that power. And, and I even take it further. I say that, that we're, we're giving our energy really a false god, of this, this false deity just saying that, hey, I, I don't, we're, we're compartmentalizing. We're saying, okay, God's over here for Sunday morning, or God's in, in just in my prayer time, getting away from the omnipresence that God is. Omnipresence means that, hey, here's, yeah, here's a situation. Here's a, an event, a circumstance. Here's some irritations. Here's some things that are disturbing. Here's some things that are really presenting a problem in my life, but we abandon so often the omnipresence that God is. And I think I said it a few weeks ago. We we sometimes will, you know, we'll go to God. Sometimes we we say even, well, you know, I tried to fix this. I tried everything I could do, and all I can do now is pray. It's like, why didn't you try that in the first place? Why didn't you hand it over? If there's no place then God can go is not, where, no place we can go where God is not. Why don't we look at those situations and 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 share, you know, my friend and colleague shared a few weeks ago, I can't wait to see the good that comes out of all this. And it's the same thing here. We're faced with those things, but let's not abandon the ideal. What is the ideal here? Well, we know that this problem, this situation, this irritation, whatever it is, is temporary. It's not truth. I mean, it's not something that's lasting, but God is. So we don't go to God and tell God how big this problem is. We go to the problem and tell the problem how big God is. And then we live from not the appearance, but we live from right thinking. And I got a few things I wanted to share around that because, boy, it, it's so easy to do that. Often, you know, I'll work with someone, Tanae and I will work with someone for several weeks, and and eventually their perception does, does shift. And, and that, in fact, they'll want to go back to the beginning. They'll want to go back to the beginning and re-examine what it is they want in their life, what it is that they've identified that that may satisfy that longing and discontent. And I see it all the time. We both do because once they examine their old beliefs, and that's that's what we're really doing here. Are, are we believing in something that's limiting, which is keeping us from thinking big enough or thinking of the ideal? Once they do that, they realize that they have this unconscious bias and they, they do indeed have limiting beliefs regarding what is possible for themselves and, and what is not. And it's usually founded in their belief in what appears real rather than the I, ideal they would love to experience. So today we're really looking at realize, releasing realism, releasing that and welcoming idealism, but going a step farther because we label far too much of what is going on around us as real or reality. Now, hang in there with me today as we take a deep dive into what's going on inside us all. And because I really feel, and I'm really passionate, and that's what this alternative unity ministry is all about. It's about living your life without limits. And we do that by holding the ideal front and center, dominant, say, no, I'm, I don't care. No matter what, I am living from this energy of the life I would love to live. And it's present here and now because I have created it. I have created this ideally what I want to be, how I want to be, how I want to show up. And this is what Jesus the Christ wanted for us too. In fact, in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. And, and again, let me reiterate, beyond what we want in the physical world as far as material things, we should also be seeking the greater awareness of these intangible spiritual assets. We have, we, each and every one of us has these available to us. They're innate. They're part of our essence, perhaps even lying dormant within us. 
So we'll we'll talk about a little bit about this today, and maybe it'll spill over till next week. So we want to look at where and what we're giving our power to. You know, the favorite verse of mine from Matthew 6.33 that I always share is, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Righteousness, right use of, right use of what's in the toolbox. So don't let the world around you define what is real for you. We have people looking in here right with us this morning that, you know, they were told, you can't do that at your age. And then they go on and they win all kinds of medals running and competing. So that's what I'm talking about here. Don't let the world define for you what is ideal and what you can and can't do. It's time to live from the inside out rather than from the outside in, which will allow you to truly live life without limits. So today and maybe even next week, this will be about actually designing what you want to experience as real by living now from the ideal. And it's all about moving into that energy and paying attention to your word tracks. What are your, what are your word tracks? Do you line up with what's real out there? What you identify as real? Remember, everything's perception and perspective. What are you lining up with? What are your word tracks saying? Did you see that? Oh, I'm not going there if that's the way it's going to be. Did you see what he did? And that becomes our reality. And then we enforce it with these word tracks. So we have to pay attention to what we're engaging in the conversations, the inner dialogue that we're paying attention to and keep going back to omnipresence. The presence of God is here right now. The holy sacred presence of God is here in this moment, in this situation, in this activity within me. I am the holy sacred presence of God. In omnipotence, I am the holy sacred power of God. The holy sacred power of God is right here, right now. Omniscience, the holy sacred wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, the understanding that God is, is here right now and available to me. Even in the mainstream, and in, in, in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, he said, our subconscious mind is that connecting point with infinite intelligence. So what we perceive is real, what we perceive as an annoyance, an irritation, a problem, and calling it real, we can go and find the solution. We can go within and find the good in that. With saying the words infinite intelligence, divine wisdom, divine love, show me the way, move me to understanding. I love this. We recently lost a unity minister. Very, 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 very short little lady. I would always see her at the conventions and found out later that she used to write for Daily Word for a long, long time, the late Reverend Joy Weiler. And I was looking at a piece she wrote, and she says that spirituality calls us to discern what is ours to do rather than dictates what we must do. In our quiet time, we seek the guidance that is within us. We learn to recognize and discard the voices that are the cry of ego or some fear, fearful whisper in a corner of our mind. And we saw so much of this throughout the pandemic and throughout history. Rather than going to spiritual, our spiritual center and discerning, hey, where's that guidance? What way should I go here? We get, let the ego guide us to the fearful whisper, and we engage in that dialogue, making it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We hear this, and we find support in Scripture for all of this, as I alluded to when I began speaking today, and I can't believe how much time. I'm just so passionate about this, how much time we've already used up. So let me share some Scriptures that support this and 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 look at it uh, metaphysically a little bit, because I think it, it'll it really help you get a handle on exactly what I'm talking about. Because my intention is always to, to, to start off with telling you, what is it? What is it? How does it work? And what it can do for you? And that's a model I try to follow whenever I share with you. So some of the things that I pulled out when I'm looking at appearances, when I'm looking at what's real, 
uh, of course, uh, Romans 12, 2, but a different translation than I usually share. Romans 12, 2 in the New Living Translation says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I love that translation. I, I love that scripture in the New Living Translation. We usually hear it as be transformed by the renewing of your mind, but this is said so beautifully and so poetically. But let's define world there for a minute, because that's what we're talking about. We say, oh, that's the real world. You're, you're up here. And... No, we want to live from the ideal. We want to live from the ideal. If we look to Charles Fillmore's book of definitions, The Revealing Word, he says the world, the world is a state of consciousness formed through the belief in the reality of things external. That sums up right there exactly what I'm talking about. The world is a state of consciousness formed through the belief in the reality of things external. It leads one to follow standards of living based on man's opinions rather than on truth. This is still Charles. He said, the world is overcome. That's what we're talking about here, overcoming the world. The world is overcome by our denying that it has any power over us and affirming the freedom in Christ. And again, Christ is the consciousness, the consciousness of the ideal, all things, all things by making right use of what we have in our spiritual toolbox. Here's another one from John chapter 8, verse 23. And when we hear the words of, of Jesus in John, he's usually speaking from Jesus the Christ. If you have a red-lettered Bible, where oftentimes we'll see other areas of the gospel that he's going back and forth between the human experience. And, and John is usually so beautiful because he's coming from the Christ. So he says in John 8, 23, Jesus continued, you are from below. I am from above. You belong to this world. I do not. Now, if you take what I just said, speaking from the Christ that we all are, the Christ of God, right? The higher consciousness, the higher self, this makes perfect sense because we move about attached to what we identify as real. That's how we belong to this world. It has that grip on us. This is all real to us. This is all real to the ego. This is all real in consciousness. That's what the you belong to this world means. Jesus the Christ is saying, I do not. He's not saying you're from below. I am from above. I'm better than you. He's just saying, where is your attachment and consciousness to what is ideal, right? That we are of God, that we are each of God as the Christ of God, or, or the appearances that are temporary that you see in the world of form. Here's another one further on in John, in chapter 9, verse 39. Then Jesus told him, I entered this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind, and to show those who think they see that they are blind. How many times do we experience that? Those that are blind, they, they know enough to think they're right, but not enough to know they're wrong. And so many people walk in that energy. They get real, right? Get real. No, I'm living from the ideal. I'm living from the perfect pattern created in the image and likeness of God. Given this gift of life. This is my ideal, and I'm going to live in that energy from the power and the presence and the love and the wisdom that God is in me. I'll go on. Here's another one. Do not judge according to outward appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Again, when you hear me speak, when I'm using the word or seeing the word righteous, I'm seeing right use of, right use of all of our spiritual tools, everything available to us, faith, strength, wisdom, love, power, imagination, understanding, will, 
order, zeal, elimination, life, thanksgiving, and forgiveness, all our spiritual tools. But let's touch on the word for a moment, that, that judgment, because sometimes that has, depending on our upbringing and a religious background, it can have a, a, a negative connotation. I entered this world to render judgment, to show us really how to discern this ideal as compared to the non-real. And, and it goes on to say in, in John 7, again, do not judge according to outward appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now, but we hear in other places, well, well, don't judge, don't judge other people, but that's not what we're looking at here. Again, in Charles Fillmore's Revealing Word, he defines judgment this way. It's the mental act of evaluation through comparison and contrast. Comparison and contrast. Spiritual discernment is what that is. We're comparing, contrasting the inner voice through whose expression we come into through the, the inner voice, through this spiritual discernment. We come into a larger realization of ourselves, a larger realization of what's ideal. So that's what we're judging here. Hold on one second. Excuse me. Charles goes on to say, judgment is a faculty of the mind that can be exercised in two ways. From sense perception, what we're calling realism, or spiritual understanding, taking all of this in, defining the ideal, right? Charles says, if its action be based on sense perception, its conclusions are fallible and often condemnatory. If based on spiritual understanding, they are safe. So think about that. That's what we're talking about with judgment, making that comparison. Is that really real? Is that something I want to give my power to? Is that, you know, do I want to put all my eggs in that basket, throw my hat in that ring, and we can probably come up a lot more? Or am I doing that spiritual discernment and making that comparison? Now, wait a minute. Yeah, that's, that's showing up. And yes, I have emotions about that. And yes, I'm feeling that. And yes, it's annoying me. And yes, I'm concerned about that. Yes, maybe some of that worry is even moving in. But that's temporary. What's real here? What's the ideal here? What do I really choose to? Because we know whatever we give our energy to, we're going to multiply. We're going to increase. So what is the ideal? Where do we want to live from? Do we want to live from there? What we're identifying is real. That will fade. Or do we want to live from the ideal? And I assure you, the idea, it's much more of a beautiful experience. Jesus went on to say, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. That's the message from our master teacher and Jesus, the way shower, master teacher and way shower, Jesus the Christ. Overcome the world. I have overcome the appearance of what is real. And that's why we should look at all these teachings of our master teacher and way shower and how they apply in our lives right here today. Now, I've gone a little bit longer than I normally do. I wanted to read when I was looking at, I didn't really do a lot of preparation for today. As I said, I love when spirit drops in. I wanted to read Romans 8, but I got this tremendous tickle and I'll open the mics to share. I want to take it off Facebook first and uh, maybe we'll read Romans 8, but it speaks to this, that whole chapter from the first time I read it in ministerial school speaks to all of this. And I think it's so beautiful. But I'll open it up in a minute. Let me just take it off of social media so our sharing is not going out to the world. Those of you on Facebook looking in, if you do want to join us behind the curtain, so to speak, on Sundays, just uh, private message me and I'll get you on the list so you get the link. So let me take this off. And here we go. Okay, if anybody wants to share or ask questions or comment or just say hello, you can come on out now. Uh, we're going to wrap it up here at the bottom of the hour. Sorry, I went a little long. 
Don't forget you're muted. I have everybody muted, so you'd have to unmute yourself if you want to share. It's good to see you all here. I'm so excited. And I want to let you know, um, Lou, thank you. So many of you have been 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 tithing and contributing a, a love offering to the ministry. I assure you, that doesn't go to me as income. I'm not using it that way. I'm letting the uh, the ministry account that we have build up. And then I want to engage in some really spectacular get-togethers. I'm going to be talking to some some charter boat operators so we can maybe do a meditation or a, a, a little cruise and get out there together on the water to experience the majesty of God's creation and enter into some meditation, some messages. I want to uh, hopefully by Easter time, get everybody together, we'll do a nice breakfast and that for all of you that are supporting this. So we're working together to think of different ways that we can can, can do this utilizing Zoom and social media, but also working to bring things together in a grand and glorious way and come together to share some fellowship, because I think that's important too. All right, that's what I got. Anybody have a comment, a question? Don't forget you got to unmute. I love you. I beseech you. I see the God in you. Thank you. Did you say beseech? Uh, yeah, I did because I had lived and you know me. <laughs> okay, it's all good. There's God in all of that. And I thank you for that. Thank you for that blessing, JJ. You're welcome. We miss you. In I see Glory's got her hand up. To, yeah, yeah. I actually raised my hand. Thank you thank so you. much. It was such a delight to hear you speak live and to connect with some of my friends this morning. And it was perfect for what I needed to hear today. I've been working on uh, Unity's third basic principle this week and about uh, the ways that I can change my experience of reality. And mm -hmm. that's where it all begins is by shifting back into that realm of the absolute and the ideal and not being deceived by appearances. So th thank you. It was um, such an inspiring message. Oh, you're, you're welcome. That's why I loved this. You know, when I let it drop in, it's, it, I always find somebody that says, oh, that's what I needed today. Um, but I love the third principle a lot. You know, I wasn't really thinking of that today, but everything that I do within the alternative unity ministry is really centered in, in principle, especially on that third one there. And that's so important because we, we it's so easy to give way. It's so easy to give way to that voice that says, no, that's not possible. Because part of that, when we talk about today and I teach that third principle is that we don't have to know how. And so many of us try to figure out the how before we decide if that's something we really want. And we don't have to know how. We have God for that. God will move in the how. And and believe me, when my last my last day of drinking in 2008, <laughs> I didn't know how I was going to even make it to the next week. So God moves in a lot of good stuff and a lot of how when we surrender, when we release and let go. And I, I could have never even back then imagined the life that, that we're living now. So release the how. Oh, Johnny's hand. Times. Okay, I heard you for a minute there, John, and then you went away. I didn't want to interrupt. I've said to you many times, that you always seem to know exactly what I need to hear right on time. <laughs> it's amazing. And, I, and you well, too. I, yes, you too. <laughs> well, you you may have been referenced in that talk this morning, John. I don't know if you caught that early. <laughs> you know, um, you've done a lot of things. You know, I admire you, respect you, and look up to you for doing a lot of things that most people would have probably told you, you can't do that. You're too old. <laughs> you didn't care. Yeah, that just wasn't real. You created your own reality. You created your own ideal. And I continue to admire you for that. I got to tell you real quickly. I am getting interview calls. Uh, two or three dozen of them stacked up. And I had an interview with a podcaster and uh, I don't even know where he was Thursday. And uh, after he quit recording, we we talked a while and he was in, encouraged. 
I got a text from him first thing this morning. He said, John, I am taking steps. And he sent me a link to the swimming pool. He said, I got to get back into the swimming pool. So, cool. See, look at how, how, how you're touching lives all over the world with that second book and, and stepping out when you thought, well, what am I going to do next? That was amazing. Me, as all of your messages are, yours and Tanae's both. I'm amazed uh, how timely they are and how well put they are. Well, thank you, John. Appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate yes, your kind absolutely. words and continued congratulations to you on all that. <laughs> Anybody else? Just that it was absolutely perfect as always. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Absolutely. Well, we'll let it go at that. I will uh, I'll send out the recording. I'll get the recording out or do it some way like that, Trixie, because you said you thought your sister was going to be here. So I will uh, post it up on YouTube and give the YouTube link so you can she can watch it fluidly. Um, I think she'll like today's message. So. Thank you all again. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for contributing. Thank you for being here. Uh, we love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. Stay tuned. If you ever need a little bit of nourishment during the week, I'm still doing morning inspiration seven days a week. It's on the, obviously it's on my ministry Facebook page, Unity Prosperity Ocean. I think you can go to it from Prosperity Ocean or type in Unity Prosperity. It'll take you there and you can partake in those each morning. And we'll see you again back here next Sunday. God bless you all. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Love to you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.